wet it down and scrub using a standard detergent. The loosened contamination is then flushed away. Detailed decontamination will permit extended remanning of vital areas. Each team leader keeps track of the accumulated dose of his party. When the team has received its maximum dosage, it is ordered to a personnel decontamination station. Personnel decon stations are normally located near topside entrances. The men enter the decon station. In the decon station, the men remove their protective clothing. They then proceed to a personnel monitoring area. Here they are monitored for body contamination and hot spots on the skin are marked for immediate removal. Hands are decontaminated first, then hot spots, then the rest of the body from the head down. After showering, the men are monitored again to determine if all significant contamination has been removed. After decontamination, the men are issued clean clothing. The ship now secures from deep shelter and all battle stations are remanned. Now secure from deep shelter, remanned all battle stations. Now secure from general quarters. Set condition three, on deck, watch two. Black quarters will be sounded at zero four hundred. Prompt and proper application of radiological countermeasures has resulted in a minimum exposure of all hands. The ship and personnel have passed through a fallout area and emerged safely. The ship can now return to an offensive T situation with fighting effectiveness unimpaired. The strike area draws closer. Planes are serviced for launching. DT-60 readings of representative crew members are taken to determine the average radiation dose received. Fly quarters, fly quarters, man all fly quarter stations. Zero six hundred. Pilots man their planes. Strike aircraft are launched. Far over the horizon, a radar picket destroyer transmits a warning to the carrier. Shanghai, this is Moonglow. Many bogeys bearing two niners, they're all range 100, altitude 20,000.
Designated personnel, take ready shelter. Close Circle William Biddings. I activate the water wash down on the island. Atomic attack! Atomic attack! Surface burst! Hard right rudder! Hard right rudder! Hard right rudder, sir! All engines ahead, flank! No personnel! Take deep shelter! Maneuvering the ship out of the downwind area and deep sheltering of personnel are the only effective countermeasures that can be immediately taken. Ship control is shifted to the pilot house. The captain's quick evasion maneuver will enable the ship to minimize the radiological involvement. Standard damage control procedures are carried out. Spaces are investigated and damage is reported. The damage control assistant checks the SDR-1 repeater. A quick estimate of the fallout area is made by laying out an avoidance sector on either side of the mean wind direction. At this time, the strike aircraft and the cap are instructed to avoid the fallout area and are given a position of intended movement. The radiation intensity plot shows that radiation intensity is falling. The peak was 1400 R per hour. The present intensity is 800 R per hour at H plus 25 minutes. Intensity is dropping from its peak value, indicating that the ship is moving away from the center of the fallout area. Pilot house, I. The intensity is now 35 R per hour at each plus 40 minutes. Uh, the intensity is dropping steadily. Uh, we are apparently out of the fallout area. Pilot house, right? Mr. Willie, come left to 290. Proceed to rendezvous. Aye, aye, sir. Hold one. Left 15 degrees rudder. Intensity readings are phoned in to the repair lockers and damage control central for evaluation. The average interior intensity at H plus one and a half hours is 15 R per hour. The topside dose in the next 24 hours is expected to be 50 R. The low fuel status of the combat air patrol necessitates their immediate recovery. Despite the radiation hazard, a flight quarters crew must come out of shelter to recover and launch aircraft. Flight right, deck personnel, and your flight quarter stations for launch and recovery of cap. Top site intensity is presently 20 R per hour. If aircraft recovery personnel remain top site for one hour, they will receive a dose of 15 R. Flight stations can therefore be manned for only a limited time prior to decontamination. Extended stay time would require a rotation of flight deck personnel to keep the accumulated dosages below the maximum permissible exposure. J.A. Talker? Aye, aye, sir. D.C. Central. Commence gross decontamination of flight X and island structures. Aye, aye, sir. Following gross decontamination, the radiological status of the ship shows that the average intensity on the flight deck is two tenths R per hour. Two hot spots. Mount 52 and air defense have an intensity of about 5 R per hour. The crew above the hangar deck has accumulated a dose of about 40 R. Those on the hangar deck have received a dose of 5 R, while those below the hangar deck have received less than one half R. The ship is radiologically safe for combat. Normal routine will be resumed, but unnecessary personnel will stand clear of the weather decks. With no enemy ships or planes in the area, there is no attack probable. The ship secures from general quarters. As the ship resumes normal operations, strike aircraft are recovered.
The carrier is radiologically safe and tactically effective, a fighting ship in the fullest sense of the word. In summary, with a well-trained crew and coordinated radiological defense system, a naval ship can successfully survive the nuclear attack effects of air blast, thermal radiation, underwater shock, and initial transit and deposit radiation. In a nuclear attack situation, ship and task group commanders must continuously evaluate their operational requirements against the radiological threat to ensure maximum fighting effectiveness. During the pre-attack phase, the central countermeasures are taking shelter and, where feasible, activation of the washdown. At the very instant of a close-in burst, the only countermeasures are hands-to-face evasion by personnel to escape thermal flash burns and bracing to minimize blast and shock injuries. Protective action must be instantaneous. Immediately following a close-in detonation, the central countermeasures are ship maneuver to escape the base surge and deep sheltering of personnel to protect them against transit radiation. For distant detonations, fallout is the only hazard. Ships may have several hours to prepare before intercepting the fallout area. However, once intercepted, fallout intensities rise rapidly. The central countermeasures for fallout are ship maneuver, shelter, and washdown. Washdown limits radiation intensities by reducing fallout contaminations on the ship's weather surfaces. After fallout cessation, decontamination and dosage control are the central countermeasures. Doses in excess of 200R will reduce the ship's immediate operational capability. Doses of 100R or less will not reduce the ship's immediate fighting capability but may reduce its operational capability in subsequent radiological involvements. A thorough knowledge of the effects of nuclear weapons, a coordinated radiological defense system, and an effectively trained crew to carry out the radiological countermeasures will enable any ship in the fleet to survive a nuclear attack and fight in subsequent radiological environments.